Okay, so in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about coffee cup calorimetry and the theory behind our calculations or uh, relationships that we use in coffee cup calorimetry. So coffee cup calorimetry, our goal here is to look at the enthalpy change for a reaction and we're using aqueous reactions, right? We're gonna see they're gonna be in water in a solution, okay? And the reason why we talk about enthalpy change, right, because our coffee cup calorimetry is happening at a constant pressure experimental condition. Okay, so we're leaving the pressure constant. Now, how do we leave the pressure constant? We have our coffee cup, right, which is insulated. We have this insulated coffee cup. Now, it's open to the environment, right? We can let, if we produce gas, it can expand or it can contract, right? So the environment, atmosphere has a constant pressure, so it has a constant pressure there. Now, how are we going to look at the relationships that exist here? So we have inside of our coffee cup some solution, okay? Now in that solution, we have maybe reactants, maybe we just have water. Okay, I'm gonna use the example of just water here. Now let's say we have calcium chloride solid, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it into water. All right, so we go ahead and add it into water. Once we do that, we're gonna get calcium ions and two chloride ions, okay? And what we're told here is that the enthalpy is negative 80 kilojoules per mole, okay? So we have our reaction occurring here. We were dissolving our calcium chloride. So now what is this gonna do to our solution and how do we define a couple things, okay? So let's go ahead and say, we take our calcium chloride, we drop it in here, and now we got our solid calcium chloride. Okay, we drop it in there. As it dissolves, we are going to release heat, right? That's what enthalpy is, right? It's the heat of the reaction at constant pressure. So as we go through the process of giving off these calcium chloride ions that are given away here, so these ions are starting to form in the solution. Okay, and then eventually our solid goes away, we've dissolved it all. Now in order for us to conceptually understand our heat transfer, or we could say Q1 equals negative Q2, we've got to understand, well, what's our system? And what's the surroundings just around our system? Okay, now remember we defined our system as what we're studying, the lens that we're looking at with regards to energy change. Well, the energy change we're talking about here is our system of our reaction. So our reaction is the system that we're observing, that we're trying to look at how its change in energy occurs. The surroundings is what is around our system. Okay, well what's around our system? Our solution. Okay, so the reaction is not the physical entity of our calcium chloride. The reaction is the process of our calcium chloride becoming calcium chloride ions. So that process of that reaction is happening in my solution and so my solution is the surroundings. Now this solution would be my water, my calcium ions, and my chloride ions. Okay, so now we see it's kind of a weird thing that calcium chloride is part of my, uh, my system, the reaction here, but then the products, the calcium chloride, is also part of my surroundings, the physical pieces. The reason why we would say that they're part of the surroundings is my surroundings, my solution, undergoes a temperature change. Okay, well, if my water in here changes temperature, so does every one of these ions, because they're integrally mixed in the water, they're not separated. So if my water goes from 15 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, so will these calcium and chloride ions. So that would mean as we're looking at the Q of my surroundings, how much heat is gained or lost by my surroundings, we've got to include the amount or mass of what's in there. Not just my water, but also the ions that are present in solution or the molecules if it's just molecular compounds that are dissolved, okay? And so then if we look at this and we identify, well, now I know some information that's gonna give you the ability to measure my temperature uh, in my solution here. What does that tell me? Okay. Well, we know that the Q of my system, the amount of heat that's occurring because of my reaction, in a previous video we talked about this, 
that relates to my enthalpy change. Okay, so my enthalpy change tells me what my Q of my reaction is, my system is going to be. My surroundings is an object changing temperature. Right? In a previous vid video we talked about that. My object changing temperature we can say is equal to C delta T if we know the heat capacity of my solution with the calorimeter. Or we can say MS delta T, right? the mass, remember this is of my solution, specific heat of my solution, and then the temperature change that occurs. So now we see an enthalpy change is causing a temperature change. So in my enthalpy change, my change in enthalpy, higher, high potential energy or low potential energy to higher or lower potential energy, that difference in potential energy is releasing kinetic energy into my surroundings, my, my solution, causing a temperature change to occur. Okay, In this specific uh, example with our enthalpy change, we're going to see if we're releasing energy, that means that we, if this is negative here, okay, that would mean that if our delta H is negative 80 kilojoules per mole, as my reaction's happening, what we'll see is that we would start at a high potential energy for my reactants, and we're going to end up at a low potential energy for my products. Okay? This difference in potential energy is the amount of kinetic energy released. So now we see that we're producing this kinetic energy that's going into my surroundings causing this temperature change to occur for my surroundings. Okay. So hopefully this brings some clarification into what we define as my system and my surroundings because we can't actually define about how my heat's transferred until we know what they're transferring between. Okay. So if you have any questions related to this, please come see me because we are going to continue to work through more of these calorimetry problems and look at more and more different challenging uh, relationships that exist when we're dealing with coffee cup calorimetry.